This is Jameer Pond for Hot97.com and WBLS.com. We're here live from Washington, D.C., Justice or Else. It's Justice or Else, the 20-year anniversary of the Million Man March. We are here in D.C. just engulfed by beautiful people for one common cause, to get justice. All right, so we're going to talk to some of these people out here, talk to some of the families that have been afflicted by gun violence and police brutality, and, you know, just come to a resolution. Justice or else, 10, 10, 15. Anelia, what, what, what happened? What was the case of Alfred, and what did the police say happened to him? Um, Alfie was a physical therapist, and he went to work one day on November the 7th, 2013, and he vanished. The police, um, they looked for him for like three days, and um, then I had to hire a private investigator, and we put a search team together, and my, actually my father and another guy found my brother's body in an area that the police refused to allow us to search within the three days that they were searching with us. They said he died of a drug overdose, but his neck was cut, his tongue was cut off, his ear was severed off, he had three teeth missing, he had nails missing, um, they poured acid on the side of his head, they punctured his stomach, and then they said he died of a drug overdose. Um, we got a, a drug autops um, autopsy done. Our family, the second autopsy um, that we paid for, the lady said that it was homicidal violence. Two weeks later, the FBI got involved and she retracted her story, which she did on live TV. So it's a conspiracy and we believe that the police had a lot to do um, with covering this up along with the Texas Rangers and the local FBI there in Texas. Now, why, why do you think stories like, because there's so many stories, but a story like this, why don't, why don't you think it got national coverage the way other stories have been perpetuated in the media? Well, I really believe the reason why, because that anytime, um, I would say the strategy that most of the corrupt cops use is drugs. So CNN ran a story over three times, Good Morning America, Inside Edition, and um, even um, a, a television station way in Europe. Um, but I believe once they brought out the drugs, to discredit my brother when he was not a drug addict or anything like that, then of course it kind of started um, dying out. I'm sorry. I'm with the New Black Panther Party. I'm the national chair of Sister Krista Muhammad. The media does not want to expose the level of racism that still exists. That's why they blotted it out. Now, what happened to Otis, or what did the police say happened to Otis? And just give us a little bit about his story. Otis was hung, and the, and the, uh, the authorities said that he committed suicide. And I said, Father, like don't like to show pictures of Otis. Left. And they said that Otis did that to himself. But my family and I know that he didn't know, do that to himself. And like I say, justice will be prevailed in the state of Mississippi, in Port Gibson, and Claiborne County. And I had to stop this family because it was so chilling. Because once I saw this name, and it's the exact same as mine, I kind of stopped and froze in my tracks that this could be me, this could be any of us. And it's unfortunate that it happened to this young man. Uh, I'm with his mother, Monica, and his uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, talk about Jameer and what happened. Um, June, June the 21st, just last year, 2014, um, I was out making meetings, and um, Jameer had went to, uh, to the movies, and we met up. I always knew where he was at for him to be a 16-year-old young man. He's a good kid, never gave me no problem. And me and him met up back home. He, he was out, he went to the movies with his friends and uh, he came home. We met up about 9.30 p.m. June the 21st night. And um, I came in, uh, he went back out cause uh, they had this uh, block party out of nowhere, Instagram meet up and they just met up down a lot up the street from my house, which was in the uh, 1700 block of Franklin Street. And around 10:30, somebody was just started shooting, and my son got hit, and he didn't make it. So. Um, and you you spoke before we got on camera. You said he was an A student, really good kid. What? Right. What 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 uh what activities and hobbies was he was he into? Uh, he, he liked the uh, basketball, football, computers. Um, and he draw. Yes. He loved to draw, and um, and he loved to um push his friends to uh, be a student. He was um, 
what you call that? What, what was that in school? Uh, Zenobia. Honor roll. Honor roll. He Honor was college rating this. He he did his interns at um at the YMCA, um and um through his death he got two scholarships through YMCA and Temple College. Temple University uh, gave him a scholarship. You know, because I work I used to work with a uh, clients that son had uh, went to Temple University, so they set up a scholarship. But um, yeah, he would be missed. He's a um, like look at him. It wasn't the time he did. He always smiled. Look at all his pictures. Um, all his pictures. He always smiled. I thank you for telling your story. And um, even though we can't bring your son can't back, come in your memory too. Oh, absolutely. It's amazing. Absolutely. Same name. Yeah. Yes. And, and you said before we got on, you said his spirit brought me over here, and I truly believe that. Yeah, I do too. I know. I believe it. It did. Yep. God bless you. He was an angel. Thank you, Jameer. Thank oh you. God. I can't believe I know, right? No. The story made national news, Kendrick Johnson, and we're here with his parents uh, on his birthday. And um, I just wanted to get a quick interview with you guys. You guys were leaving, but being here today, what does it signify for you guys? Uh, and what are you guys thinking with support all around you and uh, what kind of justice do you hope to obtain uh, for Kendrick's life? Um, it's emotional. Um, wishing I was home with my family, but this is my extended family and the support here is phenomenal. You know, we know that Kendrick lives matter. They're making everybody see that not just one life matter, not just Kendrick lives, everybody's life that's been taken it matters, and that we're here to stand together, and we're letting them know that we're taking it back. Everything that they think they don't stole from us, that's theirs. It's not. It's ours, and we're here to take it back. Yes, you sir. You sir. Uh, the, the support here is wonderful. Uh, we just wanted to come uh, celebrate Kendrick's birthdays here. Uh, we, we we had a birthday celebration uh, at home, but we postponed it. Uh, just come celebrate today for everybody, not just Kendrick. I know you guys have been talking with other families and speaking about, you know, supporting. What has been the general message that you were giving to other families and them giving to you? The ones that think their son life doesn't matter, we're letting everybody know that united we can stand and divided we won't always fall. We together as a, as a group stand. We hold each other up, we love on each other, and let them know that your kid means no more than my kid. I thank you guys. I know you guys are running. It's just a pleasure to meet you, and we are here all the way from New York praying for you guys, and we're with you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. The brothers and sisters of Rose and Ferguson, you didn't have any money. No. You had a principal. Oh. A principle that you were willing to suffer for, that you felt was bigger than yourself and your life, and the withstanding of pain. But all of a sudden, the enemy comes with money. If we give you this, will you come out of the street? And some of us, we're all poor, but some of us see that as an opportunity. So the movement begins to die the moment those who need the movement take money right. as a bribe to stop hurting a force that you're coming against. The demand for justice demands integrity. Yes, sir. The demand for justice demands selflessness. The demand for justice is bigger than all our lives. So the demand for justice must give us the will to wish to sacrifice our life because the many are greater than the one. Uh, we got to thank everybody that we spoke to, man. Uh, the family's stories were heartbreaking but powerful. Uh, we just want y'all to know that every story may 
not go on media attention, but they will not go unheard. So please continue to comment. Push this along. We need your support. How can we better connect with each other to ensure that we have unity? So from Jameer Pond, WBLS Hot 97, all the way from D.C. to New York, we are out. Peace. Keep it love.